Opportunity. A set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. When you first think of opportunity, what comes to your mind? A scholarship offer from a great school, maybe, right? Or, I don't know, maybe a promotion at work. Today I want to talk to you about a different type of opportunity, and that's the opportunity to meet people. One more time before we begin, opportunity is a set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. So talking to people isn't really an opportunity, right? Wrong. Estimates show that the average person meets around 10,000 people in their lifetime simply by existing in everyday situations. But my proposal to you today is this. What if we take the time out of every single day and try to meet just one person? That's 365 people per year. Now, the average American lives about 80 years, and I know a lot of you guys are in high school. So let's say you start when you turn 18. That's 62 years. You guys are really good at math, so let's think about this. 62 times 365 is 22,630. But there are going to be about 16 leap years, so that's 22,646 people that you can meet in your lifetime. 22,646 people. I want you to think about that. If you add the original 10,000 that you would meet automatically, then you're meeting triple the amount of people that the average person is going to meet in their lifetime. So now you're going, OK, great, she's right, that's a ton of people. But what's the point? Well, imagine the opportunities that these people could present you with. I guarantee you that no matter how smart you are, every single person in the world knows at least one thing that you don't. That's really important, so I'm going to say it again. No matter how smart you are, Every single person in the world knows at least one thing that you don't. So that's 22,646 new things that you can learn simply by taking advantage of your set of circumstances and starting a friendly conversation. Here's the issue, though. People are afraid to talk to each other. It's one of the first things I noticed when I got to college. I've always been a pretty nice person. When I was little, my dad used to tell me, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. When I was first writing this speech, I wrote here, I cannot tell you how many people I walk past and smile at on the street every day that just keep their head down. And then I thought, wait, I have like three months to figure that out. So I started paying closer attention. And I soon realized that I myself was part of the problem. Because before, when I was smiling at people, I was looking away automatically. I think I was afraid to see their reaction. But when I started paying closer attention, I realized that they were doing the exact same thing. We're all quick to offer a smile, but even quicker to look away. But why are we doing this? We're just missing each other. Why are we all doing this? I have a theory to answer that question, and that's the fear of rejection. I don't really know exactly what we're afraid is going to happen, but I think it's just a negative response of any kind. You may think I'm going off track, but stay with me for a second. Because looking away from someone on the street is symbolic of the way you speak in social situations. You could sit next to someone in class, for the whole year, or your cubicle could be next to them at work. And you both have things to say, ideas to share. But we're not sharing them, because we're afraid of this unknown response. That's why people don't take opportunities, because they're afraid of the unknown. So what if we took the easy road, just stayed in our comfort zones, and didn't really try to go out of our way to talk to someone? I want you all to take about three seconds and try to think of the most influential company to our society today. OK, so let's talk about Apple. <laughs> in a 2007 interview with ABC News, Steve Wozniak was asked how he first met Steve Jobs. I first met Steve in my college years, he said. A friend of mine said, you should meet this guy Steve Jobs because he likes electronics and he also likes to pull pranks. But what if he said no? What if they met in a group setting and they smiled at each other at different times and looked away before they could see the other's reaction? The personal computer never would have become personal. Can you imagine a world without Apple? But think about this for a second. I think in your lifetime, every single person has an Apple-worthy idea. And I know you're not going to believe me. You're like, I'm me, and that's Steve Jobs. But come back in time with me for a second. It's the winter between 1972 and 1973. You're a student at Reed College. Your friend says, you should meet this guy, Steve. He's kind of odd. He usually, I don't know, usually makes money by returning Coke cans, and he sleeps on his friend's dorm room floor. Upon further questioning, you realize Steve is a dropout. What do you do? Do you go out of your way, meet this random dropout, or do you simply turn your cheek and go the other way? What do you do? 
And don't think about that in a, duh, I'm going to meet him. This is Steve Jobs kind of way. Think about that in everyday life situation sort of way. What do you do? Are you happy with that answer? We've all heard of networking, right? Well, I'm a business student, so I hear about it all the time. And I think when we think about networking, we tend to go about it in a kind of a, let me meet the successful person so somehow their success can, I can catch it. It's like a disease, right? Um, but I don't think that's the way we need to think about it. Because I think that it should be less of, let me listen to this person because they're more wealthy or influential than others, and simply, let me listen to this person simply because they have something to say. When you network, ideas grow exponentially. Let me illustrate this to you. So we all promised to meet those 22,646 people, right? Well, if you do that, and if every single person does that, then with every single person, you get another 22,646. And those are people that if your friend is well-liked, then they'd love to meet you. They'd love to give you another opportunity, simply because you say, know the same person as them. So that means that although you've met 22,646, you're networked with that number squared. So that's 512,841,316 people. You could be networked with that many people. You'd be given that many opportunities simply by taking advantage of your set of circumstances and starting a friendly conversation. Has anyone seen the Humans of New York Facebook page? And it's a book now, too. Have you guys seen the book? OK, so basically, for those of you who don't know, it's this guy named Brandon. And his original idea was to just take a picture of 10,000 New Yorkers. He kind of wanted to illustrate the city, right? Well, over time, it became much more than that, because he, became a he started asking them their stories as well. So sometimes they're long and harsh. Sometimes they're short and from really little kids, and they're cute. The point is, they all have something to say, whether it's the loss of a loved one or my personal favorite career aspirations. That's my favorite. <laughs> anyway, they all have to say something. And he has homeless people, wealthy people, people from all ethnicities and backgrounds. It doesn't matter. The point is they all have something to say and ideas to be shared and ideas that are worth hearing. You don't have to be photographed by a stranger on the street, but please still talk to people. Gain connections. Network. This will be the end of my speech. You guys have 22,646 people to meet, and that should probably take some time. So just please promise me that you're going to talk to people, take advantage of your set of circumstances, and most importantly, smile at people on the street. Thank you.